Sarah and this is Like So Amazing. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do a sew along and a tutorial for the Colette Patterns Zinnia skirt, which is just here. This is the PDF copy. I filmed some videos which, which talk you through all of the basic steps of how to sew the Zinnia skirt and the method I use for construction, which is a little bit different to the actual pattern. I've made this new version out of an upholstery fabric actually. It's a slightly heavier weight than normal. So it's got sort of flocked velvet on it and this silver flower design. Um, I put pockets in mine and lined it um, and I've done a tutorial on the bias bound hem which a few of you had asked for after a recent video. So I hope you enjoy that. Any questions though, please leave them in the comments below. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to insert some clips of me making the skirt and then I'm going to insert some clips afterwards of me wearing the skirt at the end. I hope you enjoy it, as I said. Thanks very much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you, bye bye. First thing I'm going to do is sew together the back and side seams of the lining. I've pre-overlocked the edges. I'm just going to pin these together. So I'm just going to sew this at the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. and then I'll press those seams open. So next up I'm going to put the pockets into the main skirt fabric. So I always do these nine centimeters down which is about three and a half inches so I just make a little mark there and then align the top of the pocket so you do right sides to right sides Just pin that in place. And then you stitch along here at a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Sorry for jumping between metric and imperial, that's just how my sewing brain works. And then we're just going to do the same for both of the back pieces and the two sides of the front seam. So once that's done, what you need to do is press the seam open. So you're pressing the pocket outwards, like so. Then I'm going to match up the side seams. You just need to make sure that you've got these pockets even so you leave the pockets out and you sew around here around the outside of the pocket and back down the remainder of the skirt and then when you finish sewing you've got a concealed side seam pocket there so you just need to make sure you press it carefully and then you just have a little hint when you open it up there so the next stage is i'm going to baste the outer skirt and the lining skirt together 
so we can treat them as one when we do the pleats at the top. So all I do is I'll just pin wrong side to wrong side. So I've got all of that pinned along the top edge and then I'm going to base that with the longest stitch length on my machine just at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And I didn't sew all the way to the ends because you're going to need to install the zip into the shell fabric first. Then we're going to sew the line into the zip separately. So as you can see here, I've marked where the pleat placement is on the lining of the skirt. So what we need to do now is match these up. So from the outside of the skirt, we're going to take the two lines, match them up, and then pin them down. So if you pop the pin through and just make sure that it's hitting it on both sides. And then what we're going to do is sew each of these down. So we'll match all of these pleats up and then sew each one down. So you base them first on the lining side of the skirt. So we've got that all pinned so matching up those lines and then we're just going to sew a basing stitch just down here. on both sides. So once they're all sewn on the lining side then what we're going to do is press them towards the back of the skirt and then top stitch down on the front of the skirt. So you're just going to top stitch down until the end of that pleat. You can do that for all of them and then we're going to press it nicely. And just top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the actual fold. And don't forget to back stitch at the end because you'll need that stitching to be secure. And that's how it's going to look. And what we can do is remove those, those basting stitches from the lining side afterwards. So the next stage now is to install the invisible zip in the back of the skirt. So this is just going into the outer skirt section. So what we're going to do first is pin it down to the edge of the skirt and then I'm going to baste it using a normal zip foot and then once that's basted in I'm going to sew really close to the teeth using an invisible zipper foot. So it helps just to pin the lining out of the way. Make sure you're not catching that. going to get the other back edge of the skirt and again put the zipper tape right sides down and pin that along and then just do exactly the same and now I'm just going to change out for my invisible zip foot See that there with the little grooves and that will help me get really close to the zipper teeth. So you just put the side of the zipper teeth just here next to this channel and run it through and because we've basted it in place it should stay nice and stable now. Now as you sew just make sure that you're opening those teeth out with your left hand. So 
Now when we turn the work around we should be able to get a really close finish there. So if you can see that's worked out really well. So now we just need to join up the back seam and then we'll attach the lining to the zip as well. So what I'd like to do to close up the back seam, so underneath where we finished our stitches here, I'll put the two edges together and just place the pin there. And we're going to try and get as close as we can to this row of stitching. So we'll probably just have to sew um, just a few mils away from it, but that's actually going to create a smoother seam line. So just match up the rest of the seam and we'll keep the lining out of the way for now. that's all pinned and then I'm going to remove my invisible zip foot and put the regular zip foot back on that looks like that and then try and get as close as possible in so it'll be quite bulky next to your machine we just Position that up against that zip there and then go in as close as we can. Turn the skirt inside out, or right size round, and you can see that that's actually created a really nice smooth join at the bottom of the skirt. So the next thing we're going to do is just close up the lining seam. I've marked where the bottom of the zip is, and we're just going to pin that together and sew down the down to the very end. And then what I'll do is just turn the top of it over and just attach it via a hand slip stitch to the inside of the zip. Okay, so I've got the back seam all pinned up there and I'm just gonna sew that up to the zip mark. Then I'll turn the skirt inside out and what we need to do is just fold the seam allowances back on themselves and then slip stitch this section here to the zipper tape on the inside. And that okay so that is now slip stitched down so a nice neat edge and the next stage is going to be to install the waistband. So I've already pre-interfaced my waistband. So what I'm going to do is fold this in half with right sides together and stitch the two ends down. And on, and on the right hand side, 
there's a notch on the pattern piece. So you're going to sew 5 eighths of an inch down here and then 5 eighths of an inch down here. Stop at this notch mark and just make sure you backstitch carefully. And then what we're going to do is just trim across the corner because we're going to be turning that piece out and that's going to form the button extension. And then I'm just going to trim off that corner and trim that seam down. And go over to the iron and press that open. As you turn this corner through, I always find a chopstick is really great for just digging into the corner and getting it nice and sharp. Push that through and then just use a point turner or chopstick, knitting needle, something like that. And wrestle with it until it looks nice and sharp. place and fold the remainder of the waistband in half and press that. Okay so next up we're going to make sure our skirt is facing right side out and the waistband as well and just where you've turned that through and you've got that little notch line that up with the edge of the left hand side of the skirt the back of the skirt. There should be a notch or a marking for the side seams. So match those up and just pin all the way around and then your and then your edge here on the other end of the waistband is going to match up to the edge of the other side of the skirt. So just put a pin in there. So pin all the way around and then we're going to sew at 5 eighths of an inch. So when you turn it around it should look nice and neat like that. Okay so I finished that seam there and we can turn it over and it's looking really nice. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold under five eighths of an inch and just pin along the inside of the waistband. You can obviously press this down with this fabric because it's so thick. I'm actually just going to fold it over by eye, just match it up to that seam line and pin along there. So starting at this edge here. Just 
just make sure it's all nice and straight. And then what we'll do, once we're sure that we're going to catch that edge when we top stitch on the front, you can transfer those pins to the front. And just make sure you remove them from the back. And then once you're finished pinning, we're gonna sew just an edge stitch along here and if you want to switch over to a stitch in the ditch foot, that might be really useful and make sure you get a consistent line along there. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to my stitch in the ditch foot. Um, it's also the blind hemming foot does the same thing. So if you can see this little fin at the bottom, so that we're gonna run that along the seam line that we've already sewn. I'm gonna move the needle position over to the right here of the seam. You just make sure that that groove just lines up there and then you'll have a consistent line of stitching. Okay, next up we're going to be sewing the buttonhole at the back of the skirt. So I've got my buttonhole foot here and this decorative button and I'm going to pop the button into the back and just close it up so that we get the right size buttonhole. I'm going to attach this to my machine and don't forget you need to pull down the lever at the back so it stops where it should do and I'm just going to choose the buttonhole that I want to use get going. So here we go, let's hope this works. Okay, the next stage is you want to try the skirt on and work out where you want the hem. So I've done that and I'm going to be taking my skirt up by five eighths of an inch. So. The way I'm going to do the outside hem is I'm going to use bias binding. So a few people have asked me for this technique. So we're going to go onto the outside of the skirt first of all. So on the bias binding here, you've got this fold here and that's where we're going to be sewing along this channel here. So I'm going to line that up 5 eighths of an inch away from the seam. So we'll just check that. Yeah, that's fine. And then I'm going to just pin the first bit and then I'm going to do the rest by eye. So I'm gonna start just by the edge of this seam here. So I'll pop a pin in there. and then head over to the machine here and then just start to sew in that groove of the bias binding I always make sure that I stop with my needle down in my work. There's a function on this machine that lets me do that. Okay, so what I've done here is 
I actually went back to the start and just folded that initial edge over just by sort of half an inch and then when I've finished up I've overlapped the seam just over there so that when we fold it over there's a nice clean edge so that's not going to fray or anything. So the next stage now is we're going to trim the main fabric here back to the line of the bias tape so that when we fold over there's no bulk there. So I'll just take my, my scissors and trim that back and just make sure you don't catch any of the main skirt. And then what we're going to do is press that round so we turn that bias tape to the inside and there's a couple of methods of doing this you can either then hand slip stitch this down but given this is quite a thick substantial fabric I'm fine actually with sewing just a line of machine stitches around this but we'll come to that shortly so I'm just going to carry on trimming and then I'm going to press this back up and then I'll come back Okay, so I've gone round the rest of the skirt and I've pinned it all up. So what we're doing basically is just enclosing those raw edges there, just so I can show you here, and then just pinning that down. Then I've got a black thread in the top of my machine and the bobbin thread is the purple of the outside of the skirt because I'm going to sew on the inside just so I can make sure that I'm catching that edge. start here and I'm going to sew this at 5 eighths of an inch because that will make sure that I'm consistent along the edge um, but also catching the edge of this bias, bias tape here. I'm doing it at a stitch length of 2.8 because it is a top stitch. So we've got the bias trim on the inside and a nice neat line of top stitching on the outside. Really nice way to finish a hem. Then on the hem of the lining, I am just going to overlock the edges to stop them from fraying and then do a narrow hem at 5 eighths of an inch.